fans, Farm Boy Reef here. So today's Coral Friday. I picked up a really nice specimen for you guys. It's been in the tank here. It's been acclimating for about an hour and a half now. Um, what I ended up getting you guys, and you guys really wanted to see, I ended up getting a torch coral. A really nice torch coral. This one is actually really nice pink. Um, I haven't seen this one very often, so I thought, well, if you guys wanted to see a nice one, I got one for you today. So this one it originates from, uh, it's an Aussie coral from Australia. If you guys know a lot of corals that come from Australia, they're very beautiful, bright in color. Um, this coral, for its requirements, uh, it, it's good to keep the elements up because it's going to require like strontium, magnesium, calcium. If you really want this coral to grow and really take off, all right. Um, one other thing with the lighting, it likes a moderate light, a moderate flow. So you're going to want to keep it keep it somewhere mid level, and somewhere it gets enough flow to keep moving. Because at night, um, it likes to feed. Its uh, tentacles, sweeping tentacles, can commit at least six inches. So you're going to want to keep this coral placed away from other corals so it doesn't touch and sting them and uh, kill them. So that's one good pointer. Just make sure you keep enough uh, adequate room around each coral so they have room to grow in your tank. Um, and with flow, you want to put some more there's enough flow to keep the tentacles moving and the lighting. So if you keep if you keep this coral mid-level, they'll have just enough light that it's going to need to uh, keep growing. So what we have to do, we have to take this coral down to the lab. We're going to have to coral dip it and make sure we have no pests. Um, you gotta make sure there's no flatworms, uh, pest starfish, aptasia, pyramid snails. We want to protect our clams. Those pyramid snails can really eradicate your tank if you have clams. And if flatworms are not good, they can really take off in your tank as well and uh, kill and eat a lot of your corals. So that's one couple things we're gonna have to do before we get this coral into the tank. So it's a really nice specimen today, guys. Let's head down to the lab. Let's coral dip this. We'll bring it up. We'll get it underneath the radions. It's a really pink color, so hopefully we can make these colors pop by turning on the reef link. And see what we can do. All right, so we made her down to the lab. So what we have to do now is we gotta get this uh, Aussie pink tip uh, coral all uh, dipped up. So what we're gonna need is some reef primer from Polylab. We're gonna need the white bucket, five liters of water, and our coral. So this is the coral, guys, bringing you guys up close and personal. This is uh, the pink tip torch, Aussie. So we're gonna have to get this all mixed up. So we're gonna need is some reef primer. So we need eight capfuls for five liters. So let's get that in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. All right, so we got eight catfuls. You need eight catfuls of reef primer for five liters of water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna thoroughly mix that up. So I got my stir stick here. We're gonna mix this up. Make sure it's all well dissolved. And then we're gonna leave the coral in the dip for five minutes. Just keep agitating around the coral. Make sure we get all the pests off. We don't, don't wanna get any flatworms, any different kind of, you know, Pest, uh, starfish, anything that we don't want in our tank that we didn't put in there. Make sure. All right, so we got that well dissolved. So let's get our uh, let's get our coral into the bag. All right, so the coral's been in the, the reef primer dip for five minutes now. I want to bring you guys in close and personal. So it's good that we just used this coral dip on this coral, guys. I'm looking, I see some flatworms. I'm gonna bring you guys in close and personal. You guys can check this out. Why it's always good to always coral dip. It may not look like there's any any pests on your corals. But that's the thing about flatworms. They're so translucent, you can't see them on uh, your corals. One thing, if you want to try to see if you have any uh, flatworms on your corals, get them with some T5, some LEDs that are blue and you can see the translucent it on the coral usually, but I'm gonna bring you guys in close personal, come check this out. All right, so here's our specimen coral today. So the reason why you should always coral dip is to always make sure you don't have pests. So I haven't moved this coral yet, but I can see the flatworms. I'm just gonna, I'll show you guys. I'm gonna bring it over here. Okay, did you guys see those things? They just fell off right there. Flatworms. So if you look around, bottom right in between here, there's flatworms. So they, you guys can see them, they just fell off there. They look different because the primer's hitting them, but those are flatworms. If you guys can see, see right there, this looks like very translucent, right there. There's one right there. You always want to make sure you keep your corals clean. So like right here, that one right there, those are flatworms. So I'm going to make sure 
and I'm going to go over this coral really well. I'm going to brush off the skeleton to make sure we have no flatworms on it at all. So as you guys can see, there's flatworms on this coral. So always coral dip, guys. I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't coral dip, but this is the reason why any people's tanks crash because you get flatworms. One other step that I like to do, if I see this, I'm going to pull this coral right out of the water. And I got a to an old toothbrush. What you're going to do is you're just going to go around the skeleton. Don't touch the flesh. You just go around the edges and make sure we have no pests left on there at all. They're so translucent, they're hard to see. So just using the coral dip, we're just gonna go around the base of the skeleton, but don't touch the fleshy part. Just stay above the where the flesh is, where it ends, and just make sure to keep it, clean it all up there really nice, so we know we have no pests at all. Just one little tip that I like to do to my corals. All right, so we're gonna head up to the 220 gallon. I got the coral all washed up. Just always make sure to rinse off your coral with some more of uh, your aquarium water, and we're good to go. So you guys just seen firsthand, why you always coral dip your corals. Flatworms, we do not want flatworms in our tank. So that's a little trick that I like to do, make sure to clean up the skeleton really well, stay away from the flesh, and you'll be good to go. So let's head upstairs, let's get her all mounted up, and see if we can get this coral to So today I'm gonna to be using the Aquascape Epoxy. It's a great product, well, I love this stuff. I've been going through it like crazy, so what you need to do is you get the two, break off about an inch each, and you're gonna mold it together, and it makes it look like uh, coralline algae. So we're going to get that all done and then as soon as it's all mixed up we're going to find a place here in the tank so i'm going to go mid-level because it needs moderate light and moderate flow so i have a perfect spot right here on the edge of my cliff that i think is going to be a great spot for this coral so we'll get this mixed up i'm going to get it all mounted up i'll bring you guys in close and personal we'll check it out under the radions and see if we can get this coral right from hand so i got this coral all mounted up a few other things about this coral as well um it's good to feed it at night as well when the sweeper tentacles are out Feed it some brine shrimp or polyplankton, uh, you know, a few times a week to really to make this coral take off and thrive in your tank. Um, the way I mounted this coral today, I used the epoxy, the two compound. I used the epoxy, and then what I did is I took it, imprinted the, the skeleton of the coral, add a little bit of coral glue, and molded it around the base, and then I shoved it into the rockwork. I got it right here on the edge, so there's just enough moderate flow, moderate light for this coral to really thrive and take off in my tank. So all we have to do now is bring you guys in close. We're gonna turn the radions down and see if we can get this coral to pop. It's supposed to be a really nice pink color. You should have seen it at the store. It really pops, so here we go. All right, so here's our specimen coral. So you guys can see how I mounted. I got the putty and I used a little bit of glue. So it's solids on the side of the cliff, so moderate flow, moderate light. So I got the reef link open, so let's start turning things down. Let's take our reds down to zero, our greens down, our cool whites. So now we're starting to get things to pop there. As you guys can see, the pink is starting to show through. That's gonna be a beautiful hammer coral. Hey farm hands, thanks uh, for tuning in this week at Coral Friday. It was great. I hope you guys really enjoyed this coral as much as I did. So tune in next week, same time, same place, and we'll see what coral I'm gonna have for you guys. So please subscribe and hit the like button.